Father, I love you, and you've changed my life. Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, privilege to talk to you, sir. It is indeed. Yes, I know. We in the chocolate community, we like to say thank you so very much. You have done a great service. Thank you. Long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. First of all, love you, love your show. Like us 101 is spot on, bro. Thank you. Right on. I haven't got more ass to the toilet seat. There's maybe a dozen toilet seats combined. Ah, ah, ah. Man, you the bomb, man. Anytime I never brought women home, <laughs> nine times out of ten, there was a female living in my place. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably absolutely right, Tom. <laughs> you don't want to come to my place. Oh, you don't want to come to my place. Oh, it's a mess. Why are you oh, listening to us? Why aren't you listening trust. to Christian radio? Why are you listening and to this show? Why do we trust? I just want to let you know that. Oh, no. That doesn't mean the damn thing. She's hang up, you coward. You old bag. You shriveled up old prune. I've dated a few dead fish, but I've never actually put any around my place. Tom, I'm calling in regards to your uses for penalin. Yes. Yes, I think Obama could use her in a new branch. Instead of the Peace Corps, we're going to call it the Milf Corps. Obama's going to be flying around the country, right? Yes. She could be the in-flight stewardess. <laughs> Come on, Tom. You fly a lot, too, my friend. What do you like to see when you're a mile high? What do you... I think like you, brother. Come on. That's the best one, Tom. <laughs> Would you like some peanuts, Mr. President? What Michelle don't know won't hurt. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. Talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. You can call in, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. As long as you're absolutely fascinated. All you need to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, Tom? Yeah. All right, uh, we're doing a debate in my English class about marriage, and the class is split in two, and I got the half of against marriage. So I need your advice on, um, you know, what should I say? Well, uh, and I'm not going to slow down, so hopefully you're taping this, or you'll hear it on the podcast. Actually, I am taping it. Good. It. Very yeah. good. Let's make this real simple. Uh, first of all, my recommendation is that guys not get married. Women stand to benefit from marriage because if it doesn't work out, they get money. They get our okay. stuff. Right. So oh. marriage is something that women should aspire to, and it's something that men should avoid because right. there are no benefits to a man to get married. Okay. There's nothing a man gets through marriage that he can't get by not being married. Sex, love, having children, a companion. Yeah, yeah. Getting married doesn't give you those things. Most people who get married already have those things. So why sign a contract that obligates you financially in order to uh, quote unquote get those things? What well, what do you what do you say to the old uh, the old you know the rhetoric of oh it's uh, making us our, our relationship str stronger? Well, it doesn't make a relationship stronger. It makes your obligation to pay stronger. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Tom. Uh, yeah, you know this lady. She's she's insane. She's always going off on her husband. How she's she's caught him cheating. You know this and that. Which lady? I mean, Who? My my teacher. My, my English ah, teacher. Right. And, that, you know, and, and so she had some personal problem or some personal issue, and that's why it's coming up. Yeah, it's pretty hilarious to see her in class, and she she tried to just to get the girls all all rallied up about you know men and how. You know, they manipulate women and this and that. They're abusive. You know, I get a kick out of it. You well, know? I don't suggest manipulating women. I suggest you just tell them you're not going to get married and uh, re resist any attempt by them to manipulate you. Yeah. All right, Tom. 
thanks for the advice. Uh, I guess, can you take me out of uh, O'Reilly? Uh, Bill O'Reilly style, I can't indeed. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! F***ing thing sucks! It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Lester listening to the online stream in Birmingham, Alabama on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. My brother, Tom, how are you doing, bud? Doing great, Lester. Hey, man, I got a quick question for you, Tom. I got this chick, man. I'm looking to get the hell out of this place. It's like deliverance down here. Looking to move to Vegas. And and I got this broad, man. She's willing to let me live with her rent-free for four or five months. I used to bang her when I was in college, man. But anyway, Tom, the chick is like 300 pounds now, man. So I can't even bring myself to bang her, but she gives the best, can I say, oral? She advanced it? Oh, man, she's, oh, Tom, she, she's great at it, man. And every time, you know, I want it. You know, she always says, listen, anytime you're bored, come over, I'll hook you up. You, you'll, hook she, up yeah, you'll be hooked up. Uh, look, if you can stand to do that, I, I, I will be honest with you. I moved in with an ex-girlfriend once. One I had cheated on and then ultimately left for another girl who I had cheated uh, with. And then when I broke up with her, this girl said, well, why don't you just come back? So I did. And I slept on the couch and I spent uh, months, months having to hear her, having to hear her invite me to come back to bed. Come to the, come to the bedroom. Come on in. Come on. Hey, hey, Tom, I don't, I don't want to put myself in a position to where this chick can say, hey, get out. Even though I can probably save about 10 grand in three months, yeah. I don't, you know, now I'm living alone, man. I like what I'm doing. I don't want this chick, man, to ever say get out or if I want to bank another bra, you know, she can say, well, you know, I don't want to do that. So if I don't move in with this, this chick, it's probably going to delay my plans for about six or seven months. Right. You also have the you option of moving in for a shorter period of time, say two months. Yeah. That's a good point. I could. You know, and save uh, $4,000. Yeah. But, hey, man, you are my he hero, man. I mean, I know you're kind of living alone, you know, and I tell you, bro, I go home, Tom, and it's quiet, man. It's silence, man. So, yeah. I mean, you know how that goes. But anyway, man, I really appreciate you taking my call. I appreciate you letting these young guys know. Don't trust these chicks, man. I was in a long-distance relationship, Tom. I thought to chick, oh, I would never cheat on you. You're the best guy in the world. And so she got a promotion at work. I found out she was banking not only her boss, but she was giving oral to all kinds of guys, man. And this chick, but you know what, Tom? I met her in the club, and, you know, she was a single mom. So I've been, I've been an avid listener for eight months now. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, man. You've taught me so much, and you're my hero. I want you to do me a favor, Tom, and take me out African travel style with the Bill O'Reilly at the end. All right, Lester. There you go. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. It. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. That's our telephone number. This is. Mm, Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Uh, hi, Tom. Um, I, I have a question about the Mormon church. Um, I, I fight with a Mormon at work every day, and uh, he said that um, I he said that the Mormon church officially is not allowed to donate money to Proposition Eight. And I read uh, on the Associated Press an article the other day, and it said that they didn't officially say they did, but encourage the other members to donate money and so is it true that they actually donated money to proposition eight well i heard the same thing you did um and there are ways to do this you know the church could give someone a hundred dollars and say here send this in right and then you put your own name and address on it yeah because uh you know we talk about it and, and mountain metal massacre and all the things he he likes to pretend that the religion is so perfect yet uh, you know, I, I spilled a little bit of uh, uh, your logic with him about taking rights away, and, and 
he also told me, and he's a you know been in the church for a long time, that he believes that black people were put on this earth as slaves. So we argued about that. So it's just it's full of. Uh, you know, just a bunch of it's a, it's full of a bunch of uh, crap. The Mormon it, Church it, was built originally on racism and discrimination. Uh, they hate when you bring that up, and they try to rewrite history. But that's the fact, Jack. Because even the Mountain Meadow Massacre in 1857, they massacred all those white people and tried to blame it on the Paiute Indians, and that's a fact too. Uh, they they just started uh, finally admitting that you know a dozen years ago or so, but. Uh, okay, uh, Tom, would you blow me up, please? Yes! Here you go. You ready? Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. God damn it! The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. On this Friday, we got the shortest commercial breaks ever. I need a catheter. I'll say hello here to. Um, my God, there's so many. David on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What up, Tom? Not you much. are right. You guys do have the shortest commercial breaks ever. <laughs> it's true. Thank you. I got this little situation, man. Um, I've been going out. I, was, I went out with this girl for almost two years now. She's been my girlfriend for a year. And I was already thinking about getting married to her. And um, not that long ago, I had an incident with an ex-neighbor of mine. She wanted to get with me. And um, it, I really wanted to get with her because she's hot. But I didn't. I just caught the field. And so my girlfriend found out about it. But she knew that we didn't do anything. So... Uh, Long story short, we my girlfriend persuaded me to move out of that my old place, so I did. I listened to her, but I, my gut instinct was telling me not to move, but I, I just did it anyways. And my girlfriend moved in with me, and I, in this last month that she's been with me, that she moved in, I just realized I'd rather be single. So I broke up with her, and um, I, um, she, she just fell to pieces, man. And... Um, I'm having a hard time breaking up with her because I just I told her I, I wanted to be over. Hello. I'm here. Okay. Um. So I I told her you know look um I just want to focus on my career right now I want to I I I really have realized this last month that I want. Do you have a question for me? Yeah, I do. What is the question? The question is how do you get rid of a girlfriend where you already broke up with her and she wants to keep it together and you and um be a man it, step um, up to the plate yeah okay what, you're, you're a pussy is, i'm a pussy yeah, yeah um, right right so. yeah I yes do. you're a pussy <laughs> shush all right you're well, a pussy get an apartment and be done with it yeah, I, I got to get another apartment now because I, I just <laughs> moved Do you have a month. lease? No, month to month. Great. So tell her you're moving out at the end of the month. Yeah. And okay. to chances are she'll move out. But if she doesn't, go find another apartment with a month to month lease. What have you done in the past when girls just start bawling and bawling? And just like, I don't you, care. I love the care. sound of it. Are you kidding? It's the sound of music to me. Yeah. I love it. You don't feel sorry for him? Nope. No. No, I don't, because I'm not a pussy. Yeah. I love when they cry. <laughs> I love making them cry. If yeah. I can make them cry, I enjoy it all the more. Wow. Yeah, but you don't have the guts. You don't have the balls to do that. Well, not as of yet, but I do need to. You get need the to. Balls you need to it. grow a pair. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, man. Okay, but you just just move on and just be gone. Just don't That's even it. have the conversation. Just move. There's nothing to talk about. You already yeah. broke up with her. Yeah. How many okay. times do you have to break up with her? Well, apparently twice now. <laughs> but okay, I will do. I will take your advice. And by Thanks. the way, did you tell Dean she's a single mother? No, she her her daughter's not in the country. She's 
Her daughter then again, she's a single mother. Well, yeah. But, but, she's... but her daughter's in another country doesn't mean she's not a mother. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Strike two, huh? Of course. <laughs> All right. And I'm okay. sure the daughter comes back to visit now and then. They both visit each other. Right. Um, that means the daughter is at your place. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. left that part out. Crowding my space. Well, you chose it, David. And you chose it despite the fact that you know I said that's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Because and you 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 felt you knew more than I did. That's correct. So even though you know more than I did, now you're calling me for advice. What do you need me for? <laughs> Encouragement, I guess. But I Encouragement? Have but you know more than I do. That's well, why you disobeyed my rules. But she's a good girl, man. You I don't, don't care how good she is. Yeah, okay. I don't care. Yeah. And the only reason I want to break up with her, Tom, is just because I just want to get laid more by more women. Man. Then that's, that's a good reason to break up with her. And that's the only reason, man. It's, it's a just... good reason. Yeah. All right, Professor. Oh. I've been scolded. All right. Yes, you have. Well, that's painful. I don't mean he's in pain. I mean I'm in pain from listening to it. Jeez, what do I do? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Diego on the Tom Likas show. Hey, how's, how's it going, Tom? Great. There we go. He just wanted to know how it was going. He didn't really want to know anything else. Michael on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, I wanted your opinion on something. I have this girlfriend who is hell-bent on me proposing to her by the end of the year. Um, and my last girlfriend, when she got like that, I dumped her because I there was no way I was going to consider ever marrying her. But this, this girl I'm with now, I actually would consider it. And she's been trying to push the benefits of marriage on me. Uh, yeah, she, which ones are those? <laughs> well, she has Canadian and uh, I guess she's European. Um, well, she can live in any of those places. She has like triple, triple citizenship. I don't know. So she's telling me if we get married, I can live anywhere in Europe. I can live anywhere in Canada. And yeah, and then we would have our What house. makes you think you want to do that? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't really want to lose her, but at the same time, it's a really big decision. And but my I'm point is, these benefits she's touting, these are not things you care about. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it would be nice to live and be able to live anywhere in Europe. Really? You, do you speak a foreign language? Um, I speak a little French, but if I were to move out there, I'd, I'd get better at it. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, how, how many years do you think it would take you to get a job in France? Uh, I don't know. I was thinking more like England or Amsterdam. Uh-huh, and she wants to live in England? Of course, she's lived most of her life, yeah. Yeah. And why do you want to live in England? Um, change of scenery, you know. I'm, change I'm of scenery? I'm kind of sick of L.A. I'd rather live somewhere else. Pal, this is a big country. It is, but I've been around. You know, I've lived in like nine different states at this point. Yeah, where? Yeah, well, which which cities of note did you live in? Uh, I lived in Orlando. I lived in <laughs> Orlando. Where? Yeah, I I didn't really like Orlando. Orlando like... is a, <laughs> Orlando is a backwater town with a theme park. Yeah, I I know. And a lot of mosquitoes. That's true. And right. a lot of hurricanes. Right. Uh, what other big cities did you live in? Uh, um, I lived in Providence for for a little bit. Providence, trip. Rhode Island. Yeah, that's great. With the mafia, very good. Uh, 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 Providence, Providence, by the way, is Boston Junior. That's true. And uh, Boston is New York Junior. That's right. They're very similar. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Providence, a little tiny, meaningless city. Yeah. Go ahead. What other big cities have you lived in? That's my point, though. It's Europe. 
No, but the but, point is, big cities, I'm, I'm talking New York, Miami, Chicago, San Francisco, big cities that mean something. Yeah, I, I've been to those cities, but I... No, I mean live in them. I know. Well, I guess Do you know how hard it is to live in Europe if you're not from Europe? No, you don't. Tell me. <laughs> I've never lived in Europe. Let me start with that. But I've been there many, many times. And I have friends there. And I've had this conversation. And I'm telling you, uh, if you think we don't like illegal aliens or we don't like people coming in here and taking our jobs, they don't like it even more in Europe. Right. Also, Europe is now a year behind us going through the same economic hard times we are. So you're saying... You, how, how welcoming do you think they're going to be to an outsider when the people who live there can't get jobs? That, that's uh, a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Well, you haven't thought about a lot of things. All you've thought about is this girl put a gun to your head, and you're thinking about uh, 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 telling her, okay, I'll give you what you want. That's what this is all about. It has nothing to do with whether, whether it's good for you or not good for you. Uh, she wants to turn you into a hostage, and you're willing to volunteer for the job. Another benefit she's brought up. You, is... you haven't denied what I just said, have you? No. <laughs> because you know it's true. Well, oh, I guess. Yeah, what a pussy. <laughs> so what do you think I should do? You know what I think you should do. Do you have to ask? No, guess not. You know what happens when a woman gives me an ultimatum? What? The answer is no. It doesn't matter what the ultimatum is. Nobody pushes me around. Uh not so much being pushed Yes, around. it is. She gave you a deadline. Uh, it wasn't so much a deadline either. She just really is pushing for it. It's, it's been... Well, then does, if you give in, it's because you're volunteering to be a hostage. Live it up. Go for it. Well, I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I just... Uh, if you wanted to get married, you'd have asked her. Yeah, I know. And you didn't. Not yet. No, no, you didn't because you didn't want to get married. I never really saw myself getting married in my 20s. Well, there you go. So, so you don't want to do it, but you'll do it because she's pushing you. Um, I haven't decided yet. I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday, 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's Taylor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Oh, Taylor is busy. Taylor, 19 years old, hails from the city of Dallas, Texas, and he's just too busy to be bothered talking to me right now. Ah, Taylor! Hey, sorry, man, I was on a different line. Oh, well, gee, we got all day. Oh, yeah, well, we got longer commercial breaks than you, apparently. Anyway, man, I just wanted to call and let you know you're an a-hole. Thank you. I take that as the compliment that I know it was intended as. Yeah, I, I figure you did. I, I am mean, indeed an a-hole. I'm a son of a bitch. I'm a bastard. Uh, all of those. What was it that call about two calls ago? I mean, you know, I can understand if you're saying that, you know, you don't you don't care if women cry or whatever when you break No, it no, off. I do care. I, if they don't cry, I haven't done my job. Exactly. See, that's what I'm saying. I mean, why do you have to be like that? I don't, I don't understand that. Because uh, they, they had no right to expect anything in the first place. <sighs> Maybe they don't have a right to, but you've kind of led them to believe. No, I don't lead them to believe anything. Oh, come on, Tom. No, I don't. Just because I have sex with them or speak to them doesn't mean that I want to get committed to them or marry them, live with them. Uh, that's their own uh, uh, delusion. It is not anything I've ever told them to do. 
you haven't told them, but I mean, generally that's how it works, you know. I mean, the majority of people, whenever they get into a relationship, they're looking to get married, looking for a long-term relationship. But when well, you anybody leave, who wants that is welcome to ask me, and I'll tell them the truth. I wouldn't lie about that. All right. I mean, I, you know, I guess, but just saying that it makes you happy. Oh, it does. When they cry, yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. It's just that's just beyond. I find me. it uh, immensely satisfying. Well, when we go back to you being an a-hole, I am an a-hole. <laughs> I'm very. This is the thing. People think I'm kidding. This is the beauty part of what I do. I tell people I'm an a-hole. I'm a son of a bitch. I, I say this when women meet me. If they've heard me say that, sometimes I say it to their face. They say, <laughs> "You couldn't." possibly be like that you're a little teddy bear you couldn't possibly be like that later on they find out i am like that and they cry and i say but wait a minute i told you i'm an a-hole well i told you, you up front if you tell them then that's their own fault i go on the air and announce that i'm an a-hole by the way you're not the first person to say this i've said this myself yes i'm an a-hole all right, Tom. I've said well, it many times. Yep. I have also said, don't want to have kids, love living alone, don't want to get married. But don't you understand, every woman thinks they're going to be different. They've got the magic vagina, the one that's going to convince me to break down or violate my own principles. They all believe that. Then, when they are incapable of getting me to bend or break, then they cry. Well, I guess you're right. <laughs> That's my point. I absolutely love that they're crying because it's an indication that I stood up for my principles and I did not let their vagina convince me not to do what I know that I should be doing. All right, man. Well, take me out with a bong hit. <laughs> Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Stephen. Mr. Likas, good evening. How do you do? I'm doing very well, Mr. Stephen. Well, I got a question for you. Yes. As for uh, other people in my position, I've been married for uh, just over a year, but I've been listening to your show maybe six months now. I somewhat wish that I started listening to you when I was in my early 20s, I'm now 30 years old. That happened. What kind of advice do you have for somebody in my shoes? I'm actually married, happy, have a, uh, a boy, and no prenup with a woman that owns uh, a couple homes. I make $100,000 a year. But you always kind of seem to have the crystal ball and know what's going to happen next. Well, um, you understand that one out of two marriages ends in divorce. Yeah. All right. And right now, it's too soon to know whether yours will be one of those. Yeah. You would have to have passed five years to convince me that you have a good shot. All right. I'll call you in five years. Well, if you married a year, you would call me in four years. I'll call you in four years. All right. <laughs> um, All right. But, um, you know, my recommendation to you would have been, why do you need to get married? Uh, well, you know, uh, I wanted to really start up a family. All right. And then when you get divorced, uh, there you'll be the weekend dad living at the now renting apartments right next to the freeway. You know, the one that has the sign that says, uh, if you lived here, you'd be home by now. That's where you'll be living. I'm passing one right now. There you go. That's going to be where you're living. You'll be there at exit 38. Uh, very good. And, uh, you know, you'll get a spare bedroom. You'll have bunk beds for your kids. And a roommate. And, and uh, well, maybe a roommate. And there you'll be with basic cable. You won't be able to afford, like, you know, the expensive cable because you'll be busy paying off your ex-wife. So, uh, so you think uh could help her? Do I think what? Stick it out for the next uh, five years or uh, you go with the... Uh, look, if you're happy... Then, then you know the why tempt fate. Right, cool. But if Thank you're gonna you if you're gonna tell me that you argue a lot, 
or that your wife doesn't put out anymore, that's a different story. Fortunately, not the case. But okay. hey, Tom, love your show. Thanks a lot. Can you take me out with uh, Bill O'Reilly style? Yes, Stephen, I can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F- it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, it's Nate on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tommy. How's it going, Nate? Uh, all right. I'm a first first caller. I've just started listening to you a couple. You're weeks. a first uh, first caller. Uh, you you won't believe. I just is that like that bank in Cincinnati, time. the first third bank? <laughs> um, I didn't catch that, that that last thing you said. What was that noise in the background there? Oh, it's out driving. I'm low on gas. <laughs> oh, I see. I thought you I thought you were going for the daily double on Jeopardy. Oh geez, no, not yet. Maybe uh, I was just checking. <laughs> hey Tommy, this is my situation and I I really wanted to get your advice. Like I said, I just started listening to you. I think your your uh, advice is phenomenal. I don't know how these idiots call this a the station and not and can give you all this baloney about them falling in love. Honestly, after listening to what you had to say, I was just like, Man, dude, where have I been? I haven't been listening to your show. I only listened to you about Three times in, I mean, in about two weeks, and I'm just like, I'm on my A game right now. But there is one thing I have a question about, and that's, you know, how to get out of a friend zone. Like, I have all these friends. Well, what if, what if I want to get a a friend in the sack? What what, what I no, it doesn't happen. Really? Doesn't happen that way. Chemistry first. Wow, because the thing is that chemistry first. Chemistry. If you have not exhibited sexual chemistry before you became friends, it isn't happening. Well, well how do I go about exhibiting that chemistry? Too like, late. They're friends. Ah, jeez. Stop the making is, female friends. Stop doing it. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's funny because I mean, I'm not trying to. It's just, it just happens. I mean, even, no, even you, know, you are you are actively participating. <sighs> I don't well, make not, friends with girls. You know, you know, uh, the only women, the you only know, the only women I'm friends with, women I've already had sex with, and I'm done having sex with. <laughs> oh my god! But it doesn't happen the other way around. Oh jeez! Uh, and I've been doing, I've been going about it the wrong way. Thank God for you. Yes. Do Please, not man. waste, do not waste your time making female friends, and then hoping you can convince them to have sex with you. It doesn't work that way. They will always tell you they don't want to ruin what you have. Hmm. I, you know, I, I totally see it your way. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. I guess I have to, you know, go about it a different way. Right. Wow. Ignore them until they're naked. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks a lot, Tom. I really appreciate your advice and your help. And, well, can you take me out with, uh, I don't know, you're, you're choosing. Well, of course I take you out old school. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. So I just got a text message from my contractor who's doing will work at my house. And uh, my housekeeper was there also. And um, I guess my uh, contractor was sitting out on the porch having a cigarette or something. And my housekeeper uh, locked the doors <laughs> of the terrace. And so now my contractor is stranded on my terrace. And, of course, I'm stuck here at the radio studio. <laughs> He's sending me these urgent text messages, and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> he can't get out. He's locked in. Oh, my God. So, uh, and my housekeeper, you know, God love her, not a regular listener, so she wouldn't hear me saying this. <laughs> So somebody should uh, call over there to, like, Super Estrella and see if they can make an announcement. (laughs) (laughs) 
one eight hundred five. I hate to laugh about it, but what else could I do? Gracias. <laughs> they locked the door. They locked them out. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Now Julio has called here before, and I had a conversation with him, and now he has an update for us. But before you tell us, Julio, what has happened? Remind everybody of what we talked about. Will do, Tom. How you doing? Okay. Good. All right. I, I called a couple weeks ago. I had a friend, a, a lady friend, a very fallacious woman. She was She's fallacious. And, yes. And, uh, you know, we hung out. She was from another country. Yes. And uh, after a while, you know, she had issues with a visa. So she called me crying, asking if I would marry her for the papers. Okay? Yeah. Is this, is this ringing a bell? Yeah, yes. So I know I remember the call, but I want the oh, listeners okay. to know what we talked about because they may not have heard the call. Gotcha. Okay. So I knew in the back of my mind, all right, first, this isn't legal. Secondly, she doesn't listen to Life 101. If she did, she'd already know what the answer is coming out of my mouth. Of course. All right. So being being that I didn't want to lose a certain part of our friendship, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the lower part. <laughs> I said, uh, okay, let me, let me just think about it. I'm going to find a solution. The solution won't be me saying I do, but I might be able to find a solution. So I call her back, you know, because I, I started to, to, to just lose her number. But, you know, I wanted to preserve everything that was to preserve downstairs. And uh called her back and said, listen, you know, I've, I've, I've tried. I don't know what else I can tell you to do, but I'm not going to be able to do what you want me to do. And she had the audacity to tell me that I was not a good friend. <laughs> because you won't break federal law. And exactly. risk imprisonment? <laughs> exactly. You know I'm going through a lot. Uh, the least you could have done was call me and make sure I was okay. I said, okay, first of all, you were going through a lot, but you asked me to break break the law and risk my freedom, you know, over your feelings. Good for you. And I didn't. I, I couldn't do it. And I hope she's listening. She may not invite me to the going away party now, but, <laughs> hey, I, I don't care, you know. I was upset. There's a lot of other fallacious women. I live in Los Angeles. Yes. I'm here for the party. And do I take it, uh, the Julio, you are African-American? Yes, I am. Well, now that Obama's been elected, time's going to be good for you. More ass. I was already getting more ass in the toilet seat. It's going to be now. over the top now. <laughs> Indeed. And hey, listen, do you, do, you, do, you, do you still have the uh, the screaming orgasm? I want to send her a reminder. I do indeed, Julio. Here you go. Oh, oh God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not How you much. Doing? doing great. I'm um, just, just calling, a you know, first-time caller, like I've been listening for the last couple of weeks now. I'm a big, serious subscriber, so I just wanted to get your take on this and how you Let feel. me ask you a question. What would make you a big, serious subscriber? You pay $13 a month. Right. Uh, other people pay $13 a month. How could you be a bigger subscriber than someone else? I can't turn the damn thing off. Well, that doesn't make you a bigger subscriber. Maybe you're a bigger <laughs> listener. <laughs> I, get, I, I don't want to get into semantics. But you're the same guess... size subscriber as everybody else. You're right. You're right. Let's, let's not, yeah, let's not get into semantics. But what I wanted to discuss with you is: Do you ever see your feelings change? Like I'm a big Stern fan, so the, I guess what I'm saying is, is like I guess his feelings change, and he got married, and he went into this whole spiel about how he wasn't going to get married, and this and this and that, and then all of a sudden he gets married. Do you ever see your your views changing on women to the point where you completely change your show? Um, completely change my show. Well, in the sense that... My show, know, you're, you're, let me just say this about my show. My show has life. always, over the years, metamorphosed. It has always changed with the times. And uh, we have never stayed the same for too long. We always try to sense uh, before we jump the shark and we uh, make the adjustments accordingly. That's why we've been around so long. So right. the show oh, itself, will, the show itself that. will always be uh, uh, morphing. It will always be. Now, as far as my feelings about marriage, correct. Uh, I never say never because I've been married and divorced four times, but it's highly unlikely 
because these are the happiest days of my life right now. Good to hear. And so I don't see how I could make it happier than it is. I tried marriage, and I was not as happy as I am today. So you think about that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, I think I got a good one for you. Okay. Uh, has there ever been that one that absolutely just ripped out your heart? Of course. Uh, every man has that. Uh, yes. Has, has there been ever my... been that one to where you think uh, she got away and you could have uh, you could have been with one woman for, for more than five years? Not so much that. Uh, it's the women I actually was with who didn't see what we had or didn't see it the same way I did and who went off and did what they wanted to do, like have an affair or, you know, decided that they were done waiting for me to say, let's get married or whatever. I can't see a woman ever wanting to leave you, Tom. You're such an awesome guy. What, what was the main reasons for your four divorces? Was it cheating or they're just absolutely crazy? And cheating was only one of them. Uh, one of them was someone I married. We had an agreement not to have kids. Oh. And uh, she didn't want to have kids, and I didn't want to have kids. And uh, what ended up happening was ultimately uh, she changed her mind and said, well, now I want to have kids. And you said, I'm out. I'm out. Well, well I gave it six weeks of uh, letting her know reality that we had an agreement. We had this conversation and uh, didn't uh, change, so I was out. Well, uh, yeah, I, I went through, this is my, well, you know, I, I, I do, I'm an avid listener. I listen to you every day on the way home from work. Um, this is, I'm actually in my second marriage, and I thought after my first marriage, I, I thought the same way, and I was the president of the Women's Haters Club. But, uh, I met, uh, for me anyway, I think the perfect woman. So I'm, uh, I'm extremely happy, and I listen to you, and a lot of me just want you to be happy. Well, Tom, I'm happy. I, the hip thing is I don't hate women. I never did. I, I just don't feel that you have to uh, pay the expenses of a woman in order to enjoy being with one. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.